Hey guys, David Nuno here. TechSags Rewind presented by T-Mobile. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. And T-Mobile is a proud sponsor of this show, of The Rewind. Visit T-Mobile.com slash Across America to learn more about how you can get value and coverage with T-Mobile. We appreciate them. All right, guys, a good show here on uh, a Tuesday. I can't remember what day it is. Shereen Williams, the Hall of Famer, joined us to talk about the great ags in the NFL. Mike Evans, hello, shout out. Student bonfire tonight. We uh, talked a little bit to Dion McKinnis, who broke it all down, set the scene, and actually gave us a live look at it during the show around college football with our buddy Aaron Torres. Always love talking to Aaron. And then we turned our attention to LSU with the big game coming up. We got to know them a little bit. All that and more here on Ags Rewind. Hey, Shereen, let's get into the top three Aggies in the NFL. Where do you want to start? Well, it was a really hard week. I don't think Ryan Tannehill is going to make the list this <laughs> week. That was not a good performance for the Titans against the Texans. So we're going to go Rain Man. Uh, he had four punts, 35 average, which doesn't sound very good, especially we know how good he is. However, three of those punts were inside the 20-yard line. So a pretty good day for Braden Mann for the Jets. Glad to see him back and punting well. Number two, I, I just had to pull somebody out. So we're going with David Culley. He's not a, 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 an Aggie Aggie. He's an adopted Aggie. He was on RC staff his last college job before he went to the NFL. But a big win for uh, the Texans over the Titans. And, uh, and at least he got them with, with two victories there. He still loves the Aggies and talks fondly about his games in conversation. So we're going to adopt David Cohen today at number two. Number one, I think, is obvious. If, if anybody watched the game last night, Mike Kevin, his 72nd career touchdown, knew it was his 72nd career touchdown, joked about giving it away, but knew to keep the ball this time. Six catches, 73 yards, a touchdown. He did have a, it led to a Tom Brady interception, bounced off his shoulder pads, but I think Brady uh, forgave him for that, for the touchdown pass. And it was just, it's one of those touchdown passes that we saw so many times at a and He showed his basketball abilities to block out, just turned around. He's so big, made that catch, and it was a phenomenal touchdown catch, and the Bucks needed that win, much needed win, and he was a big part of that. So probably having Gwant back in there helped him. But the obvious number one, I think he's headed for the Hall of Fame, just a Hall of Fame-type career so far with, with what he's done. Pretty impressive. All right, guys, let's get a live look at Bonfire right now. Uh, let's go to the BCSI hotline. We appreciate Dion McInnes, the student Bonfire board member who joins us here on the program. We had him about a month ago on the show, and now we're going to continue talking about it as it gets a little closer. Dion, good morning to you, sir. Howdy, David. How you doing? Doing wonderful, man. What a beautiful view right behind you. It's uh, it's great to see it. It's uh, awesome to be talking about it. It's it's here finally, my, my man. Yeah, it is. It is. They did an outstanding job this year. We're all incredibly proud of them. All of us former students who've been watching them, they've, they've done an outstanding job. It, it does look beautiful there. Uh, this, so talk to us a little bit how the season started back with the burn in 2020 and, and where we are now. Yeah, so in uh, 2020, you know, we had the COVID protocols that uh, prevented Bonfire from being able to burn with full attendance. Um, and, and they made the commitment to burn on time so that Aggies all over the world through the Tex Ags live stream could have something of a normal experience in a challenging year. Uh, in doing that, they sacrificed what is the normally the gate revenue that usually comprises most of the, the financing for the, the next year. But they doubled down. They committed to, to do the extra work and make up for that over the offseason. Um, and the supporters and donors and friends of the fire, they stepped up. And so this fire from the very, very beginning has been um, truly a, a trial and a testament to Aggie's commitment to each other, the students to the former students and the former students to the current students. Um, it, it's been an extraordinary process watching them come through this season. In your notes to me, you, you talked a little bit about carpooling so people can get out there and, and, and get there safely and not too many cars and whatnot. What, what exactly is, is taking place? So uh, about 10 years ago, we, we realized, we experimented and dialed it in that the best thing that we could do is have everybody carpool and show up early and we incentivize that. So if you get here between 12 and 4, load up your car, everybody in it, you get in for free. Between 4 and 6, it's $10 per vehicle. After 6, it's 20. And that's the way we can get as many Aggies in here as possible, as early as possible, so we don't have a traffic jam going all the way back to university, which did happen one time and hasn't happened since. So we want to make sure everybody does that. Uh, and we can get as many Aggies together motivated around this fire tonight. 
Dion, you also have a special announcement that's going to happen during Burn, correct? Can you give us a preview, a tease, or just what, what do you want the people to know before the announcement is made? How about that? So uh, we'll put it like this. Um, bonfire, one of the lessons it teaches is that uh, if you are blessed with something, uh, especially in abundance, it's not your privilege to decide if you share it. It's your responsibility to figure out how. And Bonfire has a long history of figuring out how to share the things that sometimes it even just takes for granted. And so uh, uh, the boys this year, the Red Pots, uh, identified something that they could do to help that would also motivate the Aggie community. Um, and, and so we're looking forward to being able to share something that, that's going to help a lot of people. And, and Bonfire is happy to share it. Dion, for people who are going to try to make it out to their first bonfire ever, what do you want them to know about this experience and about the history? Um, most importantly, this is about us. Uh, bonfire is and always has been about who we are as Aggies. It's not about who we're not. Uh, the amount of work and effort that goes into this, every log cut down by hand, carried on people's backs, thrown onto trucks, stacked. That, that work, that pride, that energy is not going to come from something as simple as, well, we're not T-SIPs. That comes from a celebration of being fighting Texas Aggies. That's what we're here for. So come out and, and just enjoy it. Uh, we, we find that people just spend hours just sitting there looking at it. Then talk to people. Find a student who, who built it. Ask them what their experience was like. If you build Bonfire, you're going to find commonality. Absolutely. Um, and you're going to be inspired whether you built Bonfire or not. So come out, join the family. Let's get warm and let's get motivated. I will say this, though. You lose this game to LSU. Regardless if LSU is down great or call. not, it, it, it really changes the way you go into the offseason. That being said, still a great recruiting class is coming regardless. Uh, but it'll, it'll just feel different, won't it? Let, let me, yeah, no, 100%. Let me jump in on that. I, I you know, such common sense, but I didn't. I, it kind of struck me today is like yes, it's so fascinating to me because there are tiers of things in terms of when I say tiers, I mean things that are acceptable and not acceptable, right? So Auburn loses to Texas A and M. Um, you know, hard fought game. We know how good Texas A and M is. Okay, that's acceptable. Then you lose to Mississippi State, and it's kind of like, well, it's Mike Leach. It's kind of good. It's you know, he, he's kind of quirky and whatever. Bo Nix is banged up. And then he moves to South Carolina, and now it's like, oh, man, Brian Harson has some explaining to do. Florida, okay, you know, you lose to Alabama, that's fine. Um, you know, you, uh, uh, you know, even at Kentucky, there's a couple weird plays, things go against you. Then you lose to Gojo, then you lose to South Carolina, then you lose to Missouri, and now Dan Mullen uh, is looking for work. And so I think that's such a great point by you, David, is fans are smart, and fans kind of know – what it all means in kind of the grand scheme of things and when things are going right and when things aren't going right. And so I would agree with you 100% is that, um, you know, LSU is struggling right now. We know it, it frankly probably will be the last game that Coach O ever coaches at LSU. They're playing hard for him, but they're just not that good. They're banged up. And so I think you're absolutely right, man, is that like one loss shouldn't, especially at LSU, uh, especially with the players that they still have, even with all the injuries, it shouldn't you know, completely change the way that we look at this season, but I think that it will. Uh, but I, I think Texas a will be all right this week. So, Scott, uh, I, I know Clark had some comments that they're going to beat A&M. How are the teammates reacting to that and just uh, just the overall vibe of the team? Well, we haven't talked to any players uh, this week yet. Uh, it was just a, com was a comment he made after the game. And, you know, you, you, it probably wasn't the wisest thing to say, but you, you also want, you, you want players to be confident. And, uh, that, you know, that's understandable, but, uh, it's, um, yeah, I mean, you know, they, they, you know, they're coming off a win and, and they're playing at home and, and they, uh, you know, they, you know, went to Texas stadium last year and lost, but yeah, 20 to seven, I mean, it was a game Texas stadium controlled, but it wasn't out of LSU's capacity. If they had a little better quarterback play to, to make more of a game of it. So, uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think I can see the reasons for their, their confidence a little bit, but, uh, it's a lot of, you know, it's a lot of bravado. I think it's one of the things that goes into this game that makes it kind of fun. Scott, why do you think LSU has played, and again, I know they've lost a lot of games down the stretch, but played so well in games that people expected them to give up on. Is it because of that very strong defense? I, I think it's, uh, yeah, I, th I think the thing the defense keeps you in games is certainly not the offense. I mean, the, the offense is averaging like, 
you know, just under 15 points a game before last week, and they scored 27 against ULM, which, uh, you yeah, know, they were expected to, to, to score a lot more. The defense has improved over the course of the season. It, it definitely has. Uh, it, you know, they, uh, they, they gave up, uh, uh, 31 0 miss within only 20 to Alabama, 16 to Arkansas in overtime and 14 last week. So, so it's, it's improved. Uh, and I, I think they have a chance to keep them in the game. And, um, I'm remarkably so because the defense is missing nine players who started some games uh, at some point this year, including some, you know, so, you know, what people said before the year was maybe the best cornerback duo in the country, Derek Stingley and Eli Ricks and uh, fast rushers like Andre Anthony and, uh, yeah, linebackers, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, um, it, it's kind of remarkable, but they've gone, they, they made a shift, uh, going to the Alabama game, uh, kind of away from the 4-3 to more of a 3-5 alignment with, with, uh, bringing in maybe some, a lot of times a five man front with, with some outside linebackers. And it's really helped uh, along with the return of Neil Farrell and, uh, and, uh, Glenn Logan in the middle. It's really helped them to, to get more pressure on the quarterback and to be better against the run as well. Scott, Scott Rabelais with us here on Texas Ags Radio. The Eli Ricks transfer news that came out, what was it, yesterday, was that expected, unexpected, out of left field? How did it all, all come come down? Gosh, uh, I have to kind of say somewhere in between because I feel like there's always been a rumor. Eli Ricks is a player. He was at Modern Day in California, which is a you know, very famous you know, football player producing school in Southern California. Then he went to IMG. And then, uh, so he changed schools in high school. Then there's, there seemed like there was a rumor every year about Eli, but his family has moved here. He had, he had some family ties here in Louisiana. His family had moved here from California. So it seemed to lessen the likelihood that he would transfer. But I, I think I'd expect it in terms of, look, they're going to name a new, a new head coach next week or the week after. Why not wait and see who that is and, and, you know, what his level of interest in you is going to be very high. <laughs> he was a five star cornerback coming out of high school. And um, and a preseason and an All American last year, and uh, just just see what that's going to be like. It's a, it's a very curious decision, but this was this kind of wanderlust factor with Eli Ricks his, his entire time he's been at LSU. So I guess I'm surprised, but not surprised. I, I hate to give you a wishy washy answer, but but uh, surprising that you would make this decision now, but not surprising that it came at all. And and look, you're going to lose some players. You know, when there's a coaching change, obviously some players are going to say they're leaving no matter what. And uh, this is the third player uh, from, from LSU to say he's going elsewhere. And uh, they, sh- they should wait, in my opinion. But, uh, you know, that's the nature of the uh, kind of knee-jerk reactions you see from players these days with the transfer portal. All right, guys, that'll do it. As a reminder, we'll have a show on Wednesday, no show Thursday, a best of. But then Friday, we're right back at it. And I would like for you to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Do it for us. Thank you so much for watching Tech Sags Rewind, presented by T-Mobile.